Hey guys, and welcome to Sunday Mailbag. I am Mark Riley, and I am joined by Mr. Dennis Zen. How you doing, man? All right, it's a, a, the Sunday edition of Collider Mailbag. It's, it's weird, like you were filling in for Perry mm -hmm. yesterday. Yep. For Saturdays. Yep. Now I'm filling in for Perry on Sunday. She is uh, really slacking right now, yeah. is what I have to say, is that <laughs> Perry didn't show up to work for Mailbag. Kidding. She's in uh, Las Vegas covering a little thing called Star Trek convention. We'll see you soon, Perry. But anyways, we have some great questions you guys send in. As you know, we answer them here on the weekend show, Saturday and Sunday mailbags. And of course, we answer them every day on Movie Talk. You can send us your questions at collidervideo at gmail.com. We pick them, we answer them. I picked five. You ready to talk about it? Yep. All right, let's get to the first one. Comic Book God. Uh, I hope quite literally is the quad, a comic book god. Comic book god writes, One key plot point in Spider-Man Homecoming was that Tony was selling the Avengers Tower. While it easily could just end up being bought by any random person, do you think that a character of significant importance bought the tower? Maybe someone we've already met. Maybe someone we'll eventually meet. Thanks for taking my question and have a great day. So this, was a, uh, this question picked my interest because... Mm -hmm. Uh, somebody hit me up on Twitter, and I wish I knew, but they supposed what if it's Norman Osborn yeah. buying Avengers Tower and making it Oscorp. I love that idea, and I and that made me think about this because I think that would make a lot of sense. I think it would fit the universe, and it would finally give us the Green Goblin MCU version, which he is arguably the most popular villain in Spider-Man's uh, history. So I would love to see that. Um, it could be just just a plot point that they brush aside and you know Tony moved the Avengers facility out into the countryside of New York. We don't know, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think uh, Norman Osborn would be a logical one mm -hmm. if they were to go that route of some someone we haven't met yet even though we've met him in other iterations right. of, of, of Spider-Man sure. but not in the MCU and having him take over. I mean, there's other things like I, I wrote down, like if they wanted to introduce Moon Knight, uh, Mark Spector is a, he's a billionaire. Mm. Possibly that. That'd if somehow cool. they got the rights back to Fantastic Four, Reed ah. Richards. But I mean, that's not the Baxter building, so that probably wouldn't happen. Right, right. Uh, Kingpin is also has a lot of money, but it's not really his style. Yeah. Uh, Black Panther is one I could possibly see them doing. Mm. It's a character we've already met before. Right. He's super rich. Uh, he has a ton of vibranium. Mm, yep. He can, he can uh, make some so, uh, really shiny walls over so, there. So maybe that. But I do think Norman Osborn, if they're going to go with someone that is an actual known character, yeah. then I would think that would probably be the logical choice. Yeah, and I love the idea of it being set up uh, as, as, simple, as simple as they're moving Avengers Tower and it plants a seed and then we get either a Marvel character or Marvel mm. villain that then ties the universe together with MCU and Spider-Man. I am hoping it's Norman Osborn. I think it's the most perfect uh, solution there, but good question. Thank you so much, comic book god, if that is your real name. All right, next up we have Aqua Panther who writes, Greetings from Ohio, Collider crew. When it was announced that we would be getting Glass, a sequel for both Unbreakable and Split, everyone got excited. However, in the excitement, the one thing I feel people have overlooked is Bruce Willis. Not since Looper has the guy bothered to give a crap in the world about acting and, ha and has been licking the stamp and mailing it in enough times to where you could have a fully functional post office. Very funny. Are we going to get the same Bruce Willis or is Shyamalan gonna go, uh, going to make him care again? Thanks for taking my question. Have a great day. Uh, another good, yeah, the, look, the, we talked about it yesterday on uh, yeah. Saturday's yeah. Mailbag about Bruce Willis and what version are we going to get? And uh, the, the new Death Wish trailer just dropped. Mm -hmm. Personally, it didn't land for me, and it, it wasn't necessarily because of Bruce Willis's performance in the trailer. Mm -hmm. It was the music choice, and it just seemed off, and I, I, it seemed like a lighthearted Death Wish because of the back in black, and I'm like, I, that didn't work for me. Personally, I think that Shyamalan's going to bring it out of him. Mm -hmm. I think that Bruce Willis wanted to do this part. I think he wanted to do David Dunn, for a very, very long time and the opportunity to return to the Unbreakable, now split franchise with Glass, I think you're gonna get a different Bruce Willis. At least that's what I hope. What do you think, Dennis? Uh, I hope so. I mean, Bruce Willis is actually, you know, he's actually a really good actor that, yes, sometimes <laughs> he does not, yeah. you know, as uh, Aqua Panther writes, he sometimes he 
He mails it in. Sometimes yeah. it sometimes doesn't even lick the stamp. He yeah. Just, he just sends out the He sends an email. Yeah. Just. Um But he's been in some things like Twelve Monkeys. He he mentioned Looper. He's he's been in things where, yes, yeah, so he he actually tries and when he tries it's he really uh, performs. Uh, it's Bruce Willis, yeah. I, I think so. I think M. Night, uh, now that we mentioned yesterday, I think as well, like, if M. Night's back, then maybe he's going to bring some of that back to Bruce Willis as well. Yeah, I, I think uh, it'd be hard not to with the with the critical reception for Split, and then you have that post-credit thing that happened that introduced us to this sequel idea. It's got everybody talking, so there's some magic happening. Shyamalan... He's kind of back. Yeah. Everybody's really happy, and uh, I, I certainly am. I thought he was back with the visit. I don't mm. know. Did you see the visit? No, no, no. That that was a that was a very cool. I am of... I am gonna watch Split. Yeah. You. Oh yeah. You haven't seen yeah, Split yeah, yeah. yet. But I already know the ending. I already know the ending. So oh. it, it's fine. It's fine. We we just ruined it for Dennis. Yeah. Everyone. No, no, Sorry, no, no, Dennis. I knew it a while ago. <laughs> it's hard not to know it now yeah, in yeah. in the business that we're in. So I knew a lot of Game of Thrones spoilers. Yes, as before you watched it. That, so but now I, you're all caught it. up, so you're all good. We're good there. So, uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think Bruce Willis is going to be back and better than ever, and I think Shyamalan's going to be a big part of that as well as this movie. So, how about we move on to question number three? Terrence writes, "Good morning, Collider crew from Minnesota." My question is a two-part question that has to do with leaked convention trailers. Obviously, everyone knows that the Infinity War trailer is all over the internet and is showing the world a glimpse of this amazing movie in the lowest resolution possible. Do you think that Marvel should just go ahead and release the actual video online at this point or hold on to the moral high ground because it wasn't meant to be released? Also, with so many trailers getting leaked from these conventions, do you think it could hurt what studios decide to present in the future? It's a great question. It's one that we've been talking about a lot because we just came back from Comic-Con. And there's a history in this happening. The Suicide Squad trailer was presented just for the Hall H crowd, and then it leaked, and I know it pissed off David Ayer, yeah. pissed off Warner Brothers. They now make a point to say, this is only for you. We will release it whenever we want. But the thing about what DC did was that the following year, they played that Justice League trailer, mm -hmm. and they released it right away. They did it again at this year's convention. I don't know, Dennis, what are your thoughts on this so well, far? Well, but they also had Aquaman this year, right. which they did not did release. Not. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, it's it's the studio stuff. If they don't want to release this stuff, it's up to them. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, with leaked stuff, I, I tend not to watch them because I don't like to watch really crappy versions of, yeah. of what could be. I don't want to see my first time seeing the, the Infinity War trailer which I have not seen because I'm not watching the leaked ones I don't want it to be all like from this side angle away and it's like dipping up and down and like because you have somebody filming and then the security guard walks by and they do this yeah. and then they come back up that's no way to watch this thing. yeah so I and I, I think it hurts too I, I, I don't want to support that as well because I think the more that this happens the more studios are hesitant to bring stuff to, to comic-con and, and they'll be like, okay, well, we'll only show you this that, that we plan on releasing. So they probably wouldn't have shown the Aquaman stuff to to, to the Hall H audience. Right. So I feel like, yes, it hurts. We sh you know, I would advise against it because it's going to ultimately turn the studios against showing this footage. Mm -hmm. um, and should Marvel release it? I think it's a situation with, I think with Suicide Squad, I think... Uh, was it last year that it came out? Last Comic Con, I think so. I was it I last think, Comic? Oh yeah, it was. It yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. I or think what happened was the, I think I the version that that came out was actually pretty decent in terms yeah. of, the, and that's why, and it got spread around a lot. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, screw it, let's just release it anyways. Right. That's what they. Yeah. That's that's kind of how it went down. And I think, yeah, with these leaks. Um, I'm noticing like Fox didn't have a big presence. You know, yeah, they, they did Kingsman. That's it. They did Kingsman, and Kingsman is coming out soon, so they had everything ready to go there. Um, but then there was no mention, zero, of Deadpool 2, of New Mutants, and X-Men X -Men, Dark yeah, Foot yeah. Phoenix. You know, yeah. and they, they're all filming, so they could have shown something. I think studios are now really weighing that that option because you have to remember you have filmmakers behind these trailers, and especially the directors where that is their work, and they want the best possible representation of their work. 
And if the Russo brothers are saying, look, this is fun for Comic-Con, yeah. but we want to tinker, which is, yeah, yeah. they've actually said, they want to do something till it's ready. That's what they're trying to do. And on the other hand as well, something that I get from seeing the Hall H crowds is that that is a communal experience. My step-niece likes to sleep overnight uh -huh. in the line at Hall H and go in with her friends. She wants to do it every year, mm -hmm. and she wants to see that footage. So then to release it right after they wait and everything. I can see the reason why you're waiting in line and why it's only for Hall H. Mm -hmm. I think they should maybe split the difference and like in a couple weeks after Comic Con, you send the trailer. I mean, I'm out. disappointed when, when studios start releasing trailers. Look, look, I know that they're, sometimes they're going to release the trailer, right? That you mm -hmm. see at Comic Con. At least wait till the, the panel. Because like me and Ken went to the Game of Thrones panel. Right. And they literally released that trailer the morning of, before the panel even, you know? And so when we saw it, it's like, well... No, we, we already saw it. Yeah, we already saw it. Uh, yeah. So at least wait until the panel. Wait till the panel. That's what they did with the Justice League last year. Do, do yeah. that. I think that's the best. I, best. I, I agree completely. If you're going to do it, do it after the panel. Yeah, I think even a week or two weeks. I mean, we're, we're heading out on two weeks now, uh, removed from Comic-Con. And there's still no Infinity War trailer. Marvel and the Russo brothers have a good reason for it. Uh, in general, don't watch the leaked version. And guys, I see you. You're you're tweeting at me. Did you see this, Riley? No, I'm not gonna watch it. No, I'm not gonna watch it. I want to. I want to get it, preferably on a big screen somewhere. I mean, even if, I can. if not, at least like. At least here. Here. At least like this on a one. laptop on like a HD quality, full res, you know. Yeah. I don't want to see your home movie of uh, and then, the and so, trailer. Yeah, someone's eating like popcorn next to you or something like <laughs> I that. I know. Here's a hot dog, here's yeah. a video. Yeah, hot dog. But it's a good question and thank you very much. So let's move on to question number four. Eric Triggs writes, hey Collider Crew, love all the shows you guys produce and appreciate everything you guys do. Got a question for you. With Sony rumored to be shopping around their film division after posting a 719 million loss for 2016 and an 86 million loss for the first quarter of this fiscal year, who do you guys consider the best potential buyer? With that said, do you think Disney is on that list a at all? I could only dream of what Disney could do with full Spider Man rights as well as the Ghostbusters franchise. One can dream. That's a great question. The one that stuck out at me is the Ghostbusters. Yeah. Um, and I thought about Disney and Ghostbusters, and I got geeky. I got pretty geeky. I went, that would be cool. That seems like a, a good fitting home for that franchise. I did not hear about this Sony thing. So mm -hmm. uh, included a link of some research, and yes, it turns out they've been having some rough times at uh, through the film studio, and they're weighing options on whether they sell their stuff. I know they... They uh, don't have James Bond anymore. Yeah. Uh, I don't, and I think that was just a lapse in the rights, and now MGM and um, uh, Eon Productions are shopping that property. I don't know what a good home is. Obviously, I think Disney is the best home. Disney is the conglomerate that can do this. Uh, what do you think, Dennis? Well, with James Bond, they, they, they basically rented the rights, and then That's they had right. the option to renew they could possibly get it back but mm -hmm. when i read the numbers on those they didn't really make that much money off of the movies yeah. because uh, of all the payment they had to pay to the right holder and like by the time it ultimately got you know to the end of it they made some money but wasn't nearly as much as as the original rights holders. Um, okay. As far as Sony, yeah, I mean, it's been talked about for years that they would sell their film and television division because they haven't been doing that great. Right. For many, many years, they're behind everybody else. Their market share is very small. Mm -hmm. They don't have many franchises. Spider-Man is the one rights thing that they have that is worth something. So Dis Disney definitely would be on that list of potential buyers because they want Spider-Man back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they did that deal with Sony you know, which made Sony some money and made Marvel some money mm -hmm. just because they wanted uh, Spider-Man in the MCU. So I could see them wanting to do that. Um, I think it's worth it just for, just for Spider-Man, but we shall see. We shall see. I mean, right now on the, on the block for Sony is their own Spidey universe with Venom and Silver Sable and uh, Black Cat. So it doesn't look like they're going to be giving up uh, Spidey at least, or well, the, the characters in the Spider-Man universe anytime soon. If they do end up selling it, my vote is for Disney only because I want a Ghostbusters 
at Disney. That would be fun. They would get some good filmmakers over there, and that could be fun. All right, so let's do the last question of the day. Question number five. Freddie Jason writes, Hello, Collider Gang. Thor Ragnarok is certainly one of the most anticipated films remaining this year. My question is, can it make a billion dollars worldwide? So far, every, uh, every both, both threequels in the Marvel Cinematic Universe have accomplished this. Though to be fair, each had special circumstances. Thanks for taking my question and have a great day. I'm assuming you're referring to Iron Man 3 and, and Captain, Captain America Civil, Civil War. War. Yeah. And so you got to look at Thor, and Thor seems to be the less popular of the three main Marvel uh, standalone movies. But here's the thing. Guardians of the Galaxy, did it make one billion? I think so. The original Guardians of the I Galaxy? I think so. I'm okay. Not, I'm looking at... Thor right now, uh, the original made 449 worldwide. Okay. That's 449. World that's, War, that's the original Thor. And the, and not, the, not close to that no. billion. Uh, the second one made 644. So that Getting was a little a, closer. An improvement. And let's look at Guardians. Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. Worldwide, 773. The original. The original. Okay. And so. then the. Yeah, so the. Honestly, I don't think there's a very good chance of it making. Yeah. That. I mean, even the Guardians of the Galaxy two is eight sixty. Um, right. With Iron Man three, Iron Man is 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 one of the most uh, beloved characters of the MCU. Mm hmm. Uh, so that's a given. And then with Captain America, it was. I hate to say, it, the reason it made a billion was because it was Avengers two point five. Yeah. Right. It had Iron Man. It had all these cool stuff it had Spider-Man. It had all these things that people wanted to see, and that's why it crossed a billion. Where I think if it had just been Captain America, I'm not sure it would have made as much. And, yeah. so, and Thor is, you know, I like Thor. I like him more than I think a lot of people, because a lot of people dismiss the Thor part of the MCU universe. Mm -hmm. He's just not as beloved. Yeah. Even it, behind it, uh, <clears throat> Captain America and Iron Man. Oh now. yeah. So no, I, I I just don't see it happening. Yeah, Depend, it, even depending, even if it's awesome, mm -hmm. it, it it has to be really special circumstances. Uh, you could look at like your point, Dennis. Civil War was Avengers two point five, so that's why it crossed the billion uh, dollar mark. And special circumstances for Iron Man three that was coming right after Avengers. Mm. The, the original Avengers made over a billion, and <clears throat> you know sent the MCU on fire. That was the culmination of Phase one, and Iron Man three started Phase two. Right, phase two. Am I am I on my phases right? Yeah, Twitter? I can't. I can't. Yell I can't, at me. Yeah, yeah. Holler at remember. me. Um, but there, so everybody was just so there was like Marvel. Oh my God, the Avengers was amazing. So Iron Man three, then I think that's what catapulted it past the, the billion dollars. Uh, Thor Ragnarok does have Hulk, so we do have a uh, a buddy road trip thing happening mm -hmm. with Thor and Hulk. Maybe that'll get more people in, but uh, but I was looking towards Guardians because that's the the closest thing I can compare it to. I thought Guardians did better, the original. I thought it got closer to a billion, uh, uh, seven hundred and something yeah. million. No, nothing to sneeze at. But I think I'm with you, Dan. I don't think it's going to hit unless it is one of those movies that just transcends the genre, and you're like, whoa, you got to see Thor Ragnarok, much like The Dark Knight or. Yeah. I, th even, I think we're going to land at around 700 something. I think I think that's worldwide. a safe bet. Um, even I could see maybe even 800. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't think it'll hit a billion. Sorry, Thor. I know you tried with Hulk, <laughs> but I think it's uh, nothing to sneeze at though. Marvel's doing just uh, just fine with their movies. So. Yeah. All right, guys, that'll do it for Sunday's Mailbag. Thanks so much for joining us and sending in your questions. What did you think about our topics today? Drop in some of your comments. We want to hear from you. And make sure you always check out Mailbag every Saturday and Sunday. And stay tuned to Collider Video. We have a great week coming up. Movie Talk, of course, drops tomorrow, 10 a.m. live, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Dennis, where can people find you? Yes, you can find me on Twitter, at ThinkHero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And I am at Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be showing up all here on Collider Video. And for Riley and Dennis, we will see you next time.